Chapter 23 The corridor was empty. No corpses. No signs of creature infestation or damage. If the ship had power, Dickerson wasn't sure anyone would know the section was over 50 years old. Kelly Moore's lights shined from one wall to the other, checking for hatches, O2 stations, and supplies. Dickerson tried to keep his focus on the rear cam, but the darkness wasn't growing like it had at the section entrance. Dickerson shivered at the thought. He didn't know if he'd lived through this, but he wasn't sure he'd ever be able to sleep without dreaming of that approaching wall of, well, what? Darkness wasn't a strong enough word. It just seemed to absorb the light as though it was consuming every photon his suit lights emitted. Just another little mystery to add to the perpetually growing list. If they could find data stores or holler recorders, maybe they could solve a few of them. Why don't you focus on staying alive first, he thought. Solving mysteries ain't going to be much use if you're dead and can't tell anyone what you discovered. He grinned. Whoa, Kelly Morris said. The squad immediately halted. Dickerson stood to his full height and saw her suit lights focused on a recessed hatch. From Dickerson's position three meters behind them, he couldn't exactly make out many details, but the hatch looked to be similar to the outer airlock hatch. You strike pay dirt, Corporal? Dickerson asked. Maybe, Kelly Morris said. Dickerson added her front suit cam feed to his HUD. Kelly Moore leaned close to a small trans-aluminum window embedded in the hatch, attempting to shine her lights through it. Beyond the hatch, a two-meter-long tunnel ended in another hatch. Looks like an airlock to me, Dickerson said. Quarantine area? Think so, Kelly Moore said. Let me see if I can get it open. While Kelly Moore hunted for a manual release, Dickerson minimized her feed and focused on the rear cam. Nothing. The darkness behind them was normal, although normal was relative. Since they'd landed on the ship, their lights had been unable to penetrate far into the gloom. But compared to what they had experienced outside the science section, the darkness was somewhat comforting. At least he didn't feel as though he were being buried alive. Found it, Kelly Morris said. She swung a panel from the wall and began pumping the lever. Dickerson watched as the status light on the panel changed from red to green. Is it open? Carb asked. Guess we'll find out, Kelly Morris said. She hit the panel control and the hatch swung open. A cloud of dust flew from the airlock and swirled in the vacuum before quickly dissipating. There we go, she said. Pressurized no less, Dickerson said. Kelly Morris walked through the hatch. Careful, Corporal. No shit, Carb whispered. No telling what's in there. Actually, Kelly Morris said, I can see through the inner hatch window. Her forward cam feed popped up on his HUD. It was difficult making out many details in the large room, but what he could see was enough. A corpse sat at a lab table with several pieces of scientific equipment. Dickerson felt an icy chill run down his spine. The corpse's preserved face was set in a manic smile, its eyes wide and sparkling with ice crystals. Fuck, Carb said. He get a quickie before dying? Shut up, Carb, Dickerson said. Kelly Moore refocused the camera through the porthole edges. There were other tables inside and several shapes on the far wall, the light too dim to make out much more than their shadows. Do we go in? Kelly Mora retreated a step from the inner hatch, seemingly lost in thought. Just when Dickerson was about to interrupt her, she nodded to herself. I think we do. Carb, stay out here. Dickerson, move up and join me at the hatch. On it. Dickerson moved past Carb. She backed up to the wall, her flechette rifle facing the direction they'd entered the science section. When he reached the inner hatch tunnel, Kelly Moore crouched and faced the hatch. I've got the door, he said. You open, all clear. Ah, Corporal, he said, and pulled the inset hatch lever. Ready? Kelly Moore asked. Ah, Corporal, Dickerson said. She crouched walked forward, her helmet lights panning sharp left and then sharp right. No bogeys on the inner walls. How large is the room? he asked. Can't tell, but the schematics say it's about 30 by 10. Shit, Dickerson thought. They wouldn't be able to see the length of the room. Not if the gloom kept eating their lights like a gluttonous... He stopped in mid-thought and blinked. What the hell? Yeah, Kelly Morris said. Her suit lights illuminated the far end of the wall more than 15 meters away. Our lights work, for once. That doesn't make much sense, Dickerson said. Don't care, Kelly Morris said. I'm just glad we can finally see more than five meters. Dickerson said nothing as he unfocused his lights to provide a wide arc of illumination. 
The shadows he'd managed to see through the porthole in the inner hatch door were more decontamination suits hanging from the wall. Nozzles jutted from a row of sinks, some with attached hoses, others simply naked. Okay, he said. Looks like a lab to me. Aye, Kelly Morris said. Dickerson checked his cams and saw the corporal had moved further into the room, heading for the far wall. She had changed the focus of her suit lights just as he had. Several more tables filled with hollow displays, scientific equipment, and the occasional mag mug filled the back of the room. Strangely enough, the corpse sitting at the first table was alone. I'm going to check the back, Callie Moore said. See if there are some data drives we can steal. Ah, Corporal, I'm going to have a conversation with this corpsicle. If he starts talking, Carb said, I'm jetting the hell out of here. Copy that. Dickerson said. Carb, got an eye on the corridor? Hi, boss, Carb said. We're still clear. Dickerson ignored the chatter and headed to the first lab table. As he approached, he made out the corpse's decon suit. The helmet sat on the floor next to the chair. A spider web of fissures marred the visor, and a lightning bolt of cracks covered the helmet's casing. Something hit that helmet hard. He drew his attention back to the table and raised an eyebrow. The aluminum table had deep dents and slivers of plasteel embedded in it. Christ, Dickerson said. Somebody smashed this asshole's helmet into the table. Can everyone agree that the people here went insane? Carb asked. Some of them, yeah. Kelly Morris said. Not Kovacs. Sounds like Dr. T.R. Reed died sane too, not to mention the command crew. Shit, Corporal, Dickerson said. We only have Kovacs' word for that. True, she said. But I believed her. Carb sighed. So did I. Dickerson focused his lights on the man's suit, searching for an ID, but didn't find one. The corpse's hands were folded in his lap as if in prayer. The hollow display in front of them was blemish-free, as though it had been carefully maintained and cleaned on a regular basis. Despite the layer of frost coating the controls, the console appeared new and unused. But the scientist had obviously been looking at it when he died. Instead of head wounds, chest wounds, or other signs of foul play, the corpse was untouched, the suit intact. Did you just die here, calmly letting yourself freeze to death? He wondered. For the man's wide eyes and the smile on his face, he could have perished in a state of pure ecstasy. Dickerson shook his head. Had to be drugs, he thought. Just had to be. Nobody lets themselves die looking like that. Dickerson crouched and peered beneath the table. A small control panel hung from the bottom. Without the inset display power, it was impossible to know what the panel was for, much less what it controlled. Think there's emergency power in here? Dickerson asked. A flash of light struck the room, whiting out his cam view for a second. Another flash followed, and then the room was lit with bright, glorious light. Dickerson grinned. Guess that answers that question, he said. Found it at the back, Kelly Morris said. The inset display came to life before his eyes. Dickerson scanned it quickly, found the switch he was looking for, and pressed it. The hollow display flickered three times and then settled into a logo that simply said, Mira Science Expeditionary Section. And now we hit pay dirt, Dickerson said. What is it? Carb asked. Check my feed, he said. Carb said nothing in response. The hologram shifted into an image he didn't quite understand at first. It appeared as little more than completely black with a few less black shadows near its center. As he watched, the darkness seemed to fade slightly, the shadows turning into actual concrete shapes. Dickerson gaped at the display. Holy shit, he breathed. A label appeared at the bottom. First Planetoid Survey. The message Captain Kovacs had left returned to his mind. She had mentioned the planetary surveys and the fact there were 11 of the celestial objects. A few more labels appeared beneath the roughly spherical shapes. 8XJ, the one referenced in the captain's final message, sat at the bottom of the image. The display zoomed in on 8XJ, and the image flicked between several different filters. The first filter showed cold blue surrounding the planetoid, its center glowing bright red. It has to be infrared, he thought. It swished again to a green filter. The object only glowed slightly more than the rest of the display view. He'd no idea what that filter could be. 
The image switched again, this time painting the rest of the image white with the planetoid rendered in shades of gray. A spider web of lines and fissures covered the object's surface in dark gray, the rest of the black surface marred by small, light gray oblong shapes. If they lived through this, Black would have a fantastic time analyzing this feed dump. Bet the AI will be able to figure out what it all means, too, he thought. The display faded to black and then a face dissolved in. The man who sat dead in the chair next to him stared at him from the image. The man's mouth moved, but Dickerson had no way to hear the sound. He cursed and tried to make a block connection. The connection was denied. Damn it, he said. I've got video, but no audio, he said. Won't let me connect. I have another one back here, too, Kelly Moore said. But it's not showing me anything but a login screen. Figures, Carb said. We come for answers and get nothing but a big tease. Dickerson kept his cam pointed at the image as the face continued babbling silently on the display. The man gesticulated wildly as a set of images appeared to his left. He was obviously explaining something about the filter views of the planetoids, but it was impossible to tell. Dickerson watched impatiently, caught between wanting the video to end and not wanting it to. This could be damned important. If they couldn't save the original data feed, then this was all they had as evidence of whatever the scientist had discovered. The planetoid images disappeared, replaced by renderings of what he assumed to be atoms. Proton, electron, and neutron counts appeared next to each one. Dickerson blinked. H-234, O-133. FE-720, C-227, SI-185, question mark-5901, question mark-8051, question mark-1382. Shit, he said. That can't be right. What? Kelly Moore asked. He pointed at the display. According to this, they found some wild isotopes of common elements. I mean, like off the charts wild. I've never read about anything like this, and some of the elements just have question marks, no period assignment. Can't wait to know what the trio will make of this, Kelly Moore said. If they don't already know, Dickerson said to himself. He continued staring at the display as it dissolved again, the man's face disappearing. The image of a large pod appeared on the screen. It was similar to those they'd seen in the slip point, but illuminated with bright white light. A mathematical equation appeared beneath it. He imagined the scientist was still talking, explaining what all this meant, but his face was absent from the screen. Shit, they'd never know what he'd said. Unless... He crouched again and searched for a backup stick. Considering Mira had been designed some 70 years ago and finished construction nearly 52 years ago, if any of the public records were accurate, that meant the tech was way out of date. He'd no idea what a backup stick would look like, much less if this setup even had them. A small button protruded from the control panel. He hesitantly moved a finger to press it and paused. There was no telling what this would do. Self-destruct? Emergency purge? Impossible to know. Fuck it, he said to no one and pressed it. A tiny chip slid from the control panel's slide. Dickerson pulled it out and stuffed it into his pouch. Guess I have a data stick, he said, or something. Me too, Kelly Moore said. Nothing on the display, but at least we have a hard backup. I think Black can read these. Guess we'll find out when the time comes. Yeah, he said. Corporal, you see anything else in here? Anything important? No, she said. But at least we have a pressure-safe area to return to if we need it. Is there still an atmospheric generator in here? Aye. The corporal paused for a moment. Looks like it's in decent condition, though I'm not sure how long it would provide air and temp. Your guess is as good as mine on that score. Well, he thought, at least we have a place to fall back to. Dickerson scanned the room looking for oddities, but couldn't find any besides the corpse at the lab table. And, he thought, there are no baddies in here. Okay, Kelly Morris said. Mark the room on the schematics as a safe area. This will be our readout if we get separated or blocked off. Sounds good to me, Carb said. So, you guys done looting the place? Dickerson smiled. Not sure there's much more to loot. Not sure about that, Kelly Mora said. Dickerson, over here. Raising an eyebrow, he turned and magwalked to the rear of the room. The corporal stood in front of a lab table with several containers maglocked to its metal surface. Beakers, test tubes, and what looked like a specimen box 
sat upon the table with a layer of frost coating the transaluminum glass. Each of the containers had a stopper to keep their contents from floating out in ZG. The test tubes contained frozen liquid of various colors. The beaker? Something like sludge filled the bottom third of the liter container. The sludge may have once been liquid, but it was difficult to tell. Without lifting the beaker and shaking it, it was impossible to know if it was even frozen. But to Dickerson, it didn't look frozen at all. That was strange, sure, but the contents of the specimen box is what stopped his heart for a second. What may have once been a human ear sat in the transparent box. Purple and black splotches bubbled out of the flesh. The hell? Yeah, Callie Mora said. My thoughts exactly. Do you guys find something we can use? Carb asked. Dickerson grunted. Huh, <laughs> not exactly. What do you make of it? Callie Mora asked. He sighed that the science section was up to some nasty shit. Kelly Mora raised her helmet to his. They were experimenting, maybe? Maybe, he said, although I imagine that's exactly what they were doing. When Black analyzes the data stick, maybe we'll know for sure. Right. Kelly Mora paused for a moment and panned her helmet from one end of the table to the other. Okay, recorded and marked. Black is going to have a lot of data to mine, Dickerson said. Bet it's going to take her a while to put all this together for us. Probably right. Kelly Mora took one last look at the table. Let's get the fuck out of here. Copy that, Dickerson said. Carb, we're coming out. Copy. I'll try not to shoot you. Dickerson rolled his eyes and followed Kelly Mora out of the room. He felt a pang of regret as they crossed the inner airlock hatch and closed it behind them. The room, no matter the corpse and the strange shit on the lab table, provided a modicum of safety. Yes, it would be a place to hole up if they were pursued by some nasties. It was creepy, sure, but he'd rather stay in the room than travel the corridors again. Carb stood a meter from the bulkhead, Elliot still strapped to her back. Which way, boss? Kelly Mora pointed down the hall. Well, first try netted us a pressure-safe room. Let's keep going and see what's next. Dickerson smirked. Yes, let's see what new horrors are behind door number two. This, he thought was one shitty mission.